Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today together with my virtual assistant we will present. Did a priest really discover an ancient golden library built by giants inside a cave in Ecuador? If you like this channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. It would help me a lot in the future to continue this. What exactly did Father Carlo Crespi witness? Father Crespi stumbled across a massive metallic alien library which was packed full of sheets of gold, platinum, and other such precious metals. Cueva de los Teos is the name of the cave where all of these artifacts and antiques were discovered. The Ecuadorian authorities challenged the discovery, but the reality is that both the Ecuadorian and British governments funded a thorough research of these caves, which drew the attention of numerous independent researchers. Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon, was one of those men participating in the research of the vast cave tunnels that were most likely built by humans. If this is proved to be accurate, it will expose all of the inconsistencies and errors in our history and origins. However, the cave has not been thoroughly probed and investigated because these tunnels are massive and appear to continue on forever, but what we have seen thus far is spectacular. Expeditions to the Cueva de los Teos In 1976, a major expedition group, the 1976 BCRA Expedition, entered the Cueva de los Teos in search of artificial tunnels, lost gold, strange sculptures, and an ancient metallic library, supposedly left by a lost civilization aided by extraterrestrials. Among the group was the former American astronaut Neil Armstrong, we have already said. For as long as anyone can remember, the indigenous Shur people of Ecuador have been entering a vast cave system on the jungle-covered eastern foothills of the Andes. They descend, using ladders made of vines, through one of three vertiginous entrances, the largest of which is a 213-foot deep, 65-meter, shaft that leads into a network of tunnels and chambers stretching, as far as we know, for at least 2.85 miles. The largest chamber measures 295 feet by 787 feet. For the sure, these caves have long been a center for spiritual and ceremonial practices home to powerful spirits as well as tarantulas, scorpions, spiders, and rainbow boas. They are also home to nocturnal oilbirds, known locally as teyos, hence the name of the cave. The teyos are a favored food of the shore, another reason why they brave the depths of the cave system. In their role as guardians of the cave system, the shore had been left in relative peace over the last century or two, apart from an occasional gold prospector snooping around in the 1950s and 60s. Until that was, a certain Eric von Daniken decided to get involved. The Swiss author captured the global imagination in 1968 with the publication of his book Chariots of the Gods, which was in large part responsible for the current emergence of ancient astronaut theories. Then, three years later, he published The Gold of the Gods, unleashing a little-known theory about the Cueva de los Teos upon his eager readership. In The Gold of the Gods, von Daniken recounted the claims of Janos von Morich, an explorer who claimed to have entered the caves in 1969. Inside the cave, he asserted, he had discovered a treasure trove of gold, strange artifacts and sculptures, and a metallic library containing lost information preserved on metal tablets. And the caves themselves were surely artificial, he claimed, created by some advanced intelligence now lost to history. The Morich 1969 expedition, everything we know begins with Janos von Morich, Argentine-Hungarian who, after searching and exploring in Peru, Bolivia and Argentina, found a source in Ecuador, which he kept anonymous until his death, who showed him the location of the cave and revealed the entrance to the underground world that he was looking for, for so long. On July 21, 1969, he made his findings public in a detailed description of the expedition he presented as a notarial act to the government of Ecuador. Morich states that in the underworld of Morona Santiago, I have discovered valuable objects of great cultural and historical value to humanity. The objects consist especially of metal sheets that probably contain the summary of the history of an extinguished civilization of which we don't have the least indication to date, the topographic description includes passages and man-made constructions, as well as archaeological remains that evidenced the life of another civilization in the caves. 
According to his theories and research, the entrance into Ecuador is one of many to this world and interterrestrial culture. But what most attracted international attention were tablets with drawings and cuneiform writing. This was red meat for von Daniken, of course, and tied in very nicely with many of his extraordinary books promoting his theories of lost civilizations and ancient astronauts. It also inspired the first major scientific expedition to Cueva de los Teos. The 1976 BCRA expedition was led by Stan Hall, a Scottish civil engineer who had read von Daniken's work. It quickly grew to become one of the largest cave expeditions of its time with more than 100 people involved. These included British and Ecuadorian government officials, leading scientists and speleologists, British special forces, professional cavers, and none other than astronaut Neil Armstrong, who served as the expedition's honorary president. The expedition was a success, at least in its less fanciful ambitions. The extensive network of caves was mapped far more thoroughly than ever before. Zoological and botanical findings were recorded. And archaeological discoveries were made. But no gold was found, no otherworldly artifacts discovered, and there was no sign of a metallic library. The cave system, too, appeared to be the result of natural forces rather than any kind of advanced engineering. Interest in the Cueva de los Teos never again reached the heights of the 1976 expedition, but numerous research expeditions have since taken place. One of the more recent expeditions was that of Josh Gates and his team for the fourth season of the television series Expedition Unknown. Gates entered the cave system with Shore Guides and Eileen Hall, the daughter of the late Stan Hall, from the 1976 expedition. Conclusion While expeditions such as these have resulted in fascinating zoological and geological discoveries, there's still no sign of gold, aliens, or a library. However, some of these studies have intensified the possibility that the cave tunnels were artificially created. Therefore the most inconclusive question is, why would somebody build such a vast cave system? It appears that humans were responsible for the development of these caverns. But who and when was it tasked with designing such a complicated and sophisticated system? Why build something so deep into the earth if you don't have anything to hide from? Regardless, the cave continues to spark the curiosity of a wide range of academics and researchers.